Today on our Marathon of Reviews, we'll be covering another fan favorite, a haunting tale about a road trip called The Hitchhiker. The Hitchhiker is one of those episodes that reminds me of the old school Twilight Zone marathons. And that's probably because that's where I first saw it. It's a Twilight Zone marathon. Starts Friday, December 31st on Sci-Fi. They'd always use the infamous Hitchhiker, among other iconic characters, to promote the upcoming event. And when you look at him, how could you not want to tune in to see what the deal is with this guy? The Hitchhiker was episode 16 from season 1. Directed by Alvin Ganser, it was a story adapted by Rod Serling from a radio play by Lucille Fletcher. Please note, spoilers are ahead. Her name is Nan Adams. She's 27 years old. Her occupation, buyer at a New York department store. At present on vacation, driving cross-country to Los Angeles, California from Manhattan. Minor incident on Highway 11 in Pennsylvania. Perhaps to be filed away under accidents you walk away from. But from this moment on, Nan Adams' companion on a trip to California will be terror. Her route, fear. Her destination, quite unknown. The lead of this episode is Inga Stevens, who plays Nan Adams. While driving cross-country, her car got a flat tire, and by all accounts, she was going very fast. This episode wastes no time. A mysterious hitchhiker basically begins stalking Nan from the very opening scene. She notices the creepy hitchhiker, who one moment seems to be there and the next moment is gone. This mysterious hitchhiker soon becomes an ongoing issue for Nan as she continues her trip. I saw him again 50 miles further on, and then again on the long straight stretch through Virginia. Since she can't seem to shake him and it's impossible for him to even keep getting ahead of her, Nan grows increasingly terrified. In one of the more memorable and intense scenes, Nan stops at a railroad crossing for an oncoming train. Once again, she sees the hitchhiker. In an attempt to get past him, she tries to drive ahead. However, her car stalls on the tracks. Although she manages to restart her car just in time and backs up, she's understandably shaken by the incident and is pretty much convinced that the hitchhiker wants her dead. In yet another attempt to avoid him, Nan takes a side road in New Mexico. But her non-stop driving leaves her stranded and without gas. By this point in the episode, you really feel for Nan. She can't seem to catch a break. She did find a gas station, but by then it was way too late and the gas station was closed. And the owner was unwilling to reopen to even sell her gas. Luckily, Nan met a traveling sailor who was on his way back to San Diego. Nan quickly offered to drive the sailor all the way to his destination, and he couldn't be happier about it. With that, the sailor makes sure the gas station attendant opens up and sells them gas. Soon enough, the two of them are on their way. Although, it was good to see Nan finally getting some kind of help. Even when she met the sailor, it was still tough to tell if he could be trusted. Seemingly out of nowhere, there's this sailor in the car who's clearly checking her out. As they drive together and talk, Nan again sees the hitchhiker and this time she tries to run him over. This of course freaks out the sailor who states he didn't even see anyone. When Nan openly admits she was trying to kill a hitchhiker, the sailor decides it's time for him to go. Nan is so desperate for him to stay though, she even offers to go out with him. He resists and abandons her anyway. Eventually Nan reaches Arizona and she stops to call her mother. This is Mrs. Whitney. Mrs. Whitney? I don't know any Mrs. Whitney. Is this Trafalgar 41098? Yes, it is. Mrs. Whitney answers the phone and says that Nan's mother suffered a nervous breakdown after finding out her daughter Nan died in Pennsylvania when her car blew a tire and overturned. So there's your Twilight Zone twist. Nowadays, perhaps the idea of a character being dead all along may almost feel cliche. We've seen it in movies before, but the twist here still works brilliantly. Once Nan realizes the truth that she is deceased, she loses all emotion, she goes cold, and for the first time, there's almost a calmness to her character. She seemingly accepted her own death. Speaking of which, right on cue, Death himself shows up in the form of the hitchhiker and says one of the more iconic lines in Twilight's own history. I believe you're going my way. Nan Adams, age 27. She was driving to California, to Los Angeles. She didn't make it. There was a detour through the Twilight Zone. The Hitchhiker is yet another favorite of mine, maybe even in my top 10. There's an ominous vibe which is maintained throughout, and the mystery of the Hitchhiker stalking this girl is totally captivating. We get very little in the way of levity, so the Hitchhiker works very well as one of the more frightening entries in the series. In fact, I'd put this one right up there with 22, Night Call, When the Sky Was Opened, and Mirror Image in terms of being terrifying. 
The performance from our lead, Inga Stevens, makes this well worth a watch. She seems like a typical, everyday young woman. It's easy to sympathize with her, as she's alone and vulnerable on this journey. Unless you guessed the twist, on her first watch, it's unclear what's happening, and the mystery is all part of the fun. Is this hitchhiker some sort of evil apparition? Or is he a ghost of some sort? Maybe a hit and run victim who's now haunting Nan. In any case, you can relate to Nan's struggle. Her plight keeps you engaged from the beginning to end. At the center of it all is the hitchhiker, as played by Leonard Strong. Now, obviously we get very little in the way of dialogue from him, but Strong is excellent as this mysterious and eerie entity. Look at him. His mere presence is just unsettling. And what makes him even more menacing is when he looks right at us, breaking the fourth wall in a very disturbing way. The open road is a perfect setting for this chilling story. Anyone who has ever driven cross country may know, there's all kinds of wacky ideas that can run through your mind when you've spent enough time driving endlessly. This type of story capitalizes on those sort of fears and anxieties. After the big reveal that Nan has already passed away, we can assume she'll be taken into the afterlife, and apparently she'll be accompanied by the hitchhiker, who many consider to be the personification of death, myself included. However, the fact that Nan has already passed away does raise the question, what exactly were we watching this whole time? And more importantly, how is it that she was seemingly able to interact with the world of the living? We see Nan speak with a mechanic, a man in a diner, the owner of the gas station, there's the sailor who she picked up, and most interestingly, she calls home and receives the news of her own death. Nan was killed just six days ago in an automobile accident in Pennsylvania. So there are countless possibilities as to the meaning behind everything we see. One possibility is Nan is in a state of limbo. She's stuck between a living world and the afterlife. Everything we see, including the people she speaks with, are part of her vision. Or, they too could be spirits who are unaware of their own demise. I can't say for sure, but again, that's the fun of it. Another possibility is that Nan is a ghost. Somehow, she is interacting with the living, and that's how she was able to find out about her mother's failing health and her own death. Whatever the case may be, I actually really like that this episode is ambiguous. Everything doesn't exactly line up perfectly when you really think about it. This is yet another episode which I think is open to interpretation, so I'd be happy to hear what you guys think of this one. Now, before I head out, you know I have to go into some cool trivia. For starters, as I mentioned earlier, Rod Serling adapted this tale from an original radio play by Lucille Fletcher. However, in the original radio play, the lead was actually a man named Ronald Adams, and he was portrayed by a young Orson Welles. Unless I drove at 85 miles an hour over those endless roads, he waited for me at every other mile. I'd see his figure, shadowless, flitting before me. Wherever I stop, I see him. No matter how far I travel or how fast I go, he's ahead of me. Also of note, the hitchhiker is somewhat inspired by a true story. According to Mark Scott Zickery, author of The Twilight Zone Companion, the original writer of the story, Lucille Fletcher, got the idea way back in 1940 while she was driving cross-country with her first husband, composer Bernard Herrmann. The couple saw an odd-looking man on a Brooklyn bridge and later on a Pulaski Skyway. About a year later, Fletcher used this idea and turned it into a ghost story, which would go on to become the radio play. So, what did Lucille Fletcher think of Rod Serling's Twilight Zone adaptation of her story? Well, unfortunately, she wasn't completely happy with it. Although Lucille praised the performance of Inga Stevens, she didn't seem too happy about not being asked to adapt the play for television herself. And she wasn't a fan of the gender change of the lead. She felt having a woman in a lead minimized the dramatic effect. One way or the other, this story was destined for television. Alfred Hitchcock apparently tried to purchase the rights to the radio play for his series, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. However, his bid of $2,000 was rejected. Rod Serling's Cayuga Productions was able to obtain the rights, though, for $2,000, with an additional $1,100 for each episode that was rerun. As always, money talks. One final cool bit of trivia. At the end of the episode, when Nan tries to reach her mother so she can hear a warm, loving, and familiar voice, ironically, she reaches only the cold voice of an unidentified person named Mrs. Whitney. This is Mrs. Whitney. Mrs. Whitney? I don't know any Mrs. Whitney. Now, Mrs. Whitney was played by Eleanor Audley. Eleanor was famous for her voice work in villainous roles in a Disney classic, Cinderella, where she voiced Lady Tremaine. I'm not going. Not going? Oh, what a shame. And in Sleeping Beauty, where she voiced Maleficent, the self-proclaimed mistress of evil. <laughs> How quaint. So Nan couldn't catch a break. It's safe to say The Hitchhiker remains one of the more popular Twilight Zone episodes. I'd rate it 5 out of 5 creepy hitchhikers. And while we're on the subject of Mr. Death, I figured now would be an appropriate time to mention that coming soon I'll have a video which discusses the different incarnations of death in the Twilight Zone. And we'll talk about who portrayed the best version of the Grim Reaper. And the last thing I wanted to say, special thank you to everyone who watches the channel and has supported me these last few months. 
As some of you may have noticed, we recently hit a milestone, 1,000 subs. So I appreciate the love, guys. I couldn't do it without you. There are 156 episodes of the Classic Twilight Zone series, and I still intend to cover all of them. Thankfully, we have a long way to go. Until next time, stay safe, be well, later. We hope you'll be alongside. Good night.